Okay, welcome back to John1911.com, everybody. Um, on this video, we're going to run through some of the features, pros, maybe some of the limitations, and uh, slight modification I would recommend to the uh, GRS Ragnarok chassis system for the Blazer R8. So um, those of you that have been you know, following us for the past week or so have probably seen that we've been messing with this and again I want to say once again thank you to uh, Jerry down at GRS for uh, helping us obtain this so we could take a look at it so let's go through some of the stuff is pretty obvious but there's a few details that I don't think are quite being translated into the American market or English so you can understand what we're kind of dealing with here so Obviously, uh, Blazer R8 is traditionally a hunting rifle, as is the R93. I do believe they make an R93 version of this, but, you know, contact GRS for that. Traditionally a hunting rifle, this converts it into more of a configurable, uh, you know, type of setup. I'm not going to use the word tactical. Tactical is really, a, a, in, my, in my opinion, a verb, not a noun. So, you know, the way you use something. But uh, the first thing right off the bat is this does have a folding stock, and you will notice that it folds over to the left. It does, you could shoot it while it's on the left. Also, at least on this example, I don't know if it's because it's brand new. Um, it doesn't flop around, but I don't know if that's by design or if maybe after a few years of use, it would be, you know, that would change. So, however, if you are a left-handed shooter, this is set up for a, oops, this is set up for a right-handed shooter because I'm right-handed. Uh, left-handed shooter, you could switch the bolt over to the left side. Would the stock, would the stock um, collide with the left-handed bolt? Well, actually, no. Um, it looks like to me that this stock, this folding stock, is reversible. If you look in, let's see if I can get the light. Look into the mechanism. You have, you know, uh, screws to mount. You know, attach here and you've got screws that attach here and you'll notice that the back of the chassis has a recess to oh, slippery little sucker to accept the uh, accept the lock however if you look at the left side they have machined or milled a a recess on to the uh, opposite side so the only reason i would think that they would do that because it doesn't need it to articulate for this direction would be to flip it. So yes, I believe this is flippable. Matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet money it's flippable. So also, um, the pistol grip on these are uh, standard AR style pistol grips. So I think that's pretty smart. You can buy or change out or do whatever you want to do. This example does come with a little compartment so you can store whatever you want in there. Personally, uh, my opinion is this compartment, it's a little bit too loosey-goosey, that lip. This isn't made by GRS. This is some company called UTG. So if you were going to keep something in there, I would consider fouling up the track a little bit so this doesn't come out. Or you may just have to throw some tape on it just to, you know, to keep it in place. Now, this is pretty interesting. If you're in the LRS2 or Blazer Tactical game, you will know that getting a forward mounted pick rail is an expensive and cumbersome and heavy upgrade. Well, this comes with a forward pick rail. So, you know, it comes, it's over barrel. So, you know, that's a nice plus. Also, it's full of key mod on this fore end. So, you know, three, you know, four, 4.30, six o'clock, you know, nine o'clock, and then, you know, at 12 o'clock it has 1913 pick rail. So um, you could mount something under here with, uh, you could get easily get, you know, some, uh, I guess, yeah, it's M-lock. Uh, you could, you know, get an M-lock, you know, piece of rail and bolt whatever you wanted to on that. However, something that I've never, I don't have a lot of experience with, I've seen them, would be possibly an over barrel bipod, which I may consider upgrading if, you know, as we can keep this long term. So I think an over barrel bipod probably is more stable and just, you know, pretty neat. Might might open that up for us. All right, <clears throat> the middle of the chassis has, somebody commented on this online. They said they'd never seen quote rail like that before. And what they are referring to is 
this area right here and it's on both sides and it's milled in and there's even channels on the bottom so what that is is uh, an area to connect one of those hog saddle mounts so I don't have any experience with the hog saddle mount tripod type setup I certainly would like to play with one and with this chassis system it's pretty easy to do I don't have to worry about stressing the stressing the stock or the chassis with some of my other guns this thing just bolts right in there and you know pretty neat pretty you know very high end, you know, much higher end than what I'm used to uh, on the uh, on the blazer side. Um, this does have adjustable length of pull and uh, comb. The the oh, it's hard for me to do it one handed, but length of pull you can pull it out, and adjust. Also, it does have cast on, cast off, and you can also raise it up or down as you need on the fly. I have to kind of hard for me to do it while I'm holding it one-handed. There you go. It's kind of new, kind of sticky. So that's kind of good. Um, these come with uh, QD mounts. Uh, one at the front at uh, six o'clock underneath. One at the rear of the stock, which I think is very handy because a lot of the uh, slings that I prefer to use with the Tactical Two, I can't really. They're not ideal to use with the R8 hunting configuration, so you know that's a huge bonus. Um, also, 1913 monopod or 1913 rail, so you can put a rear pod, monopod, butt spike, whatever you want to call it, whatever ugly, or ugly or funny term you want to use. To, if you so chose to do that, you could do that on that. So there are some, a few what I would call limitations and so this is really going to affect more of the hunters or the more traditional blazer R8 folks than you know say the tactical guys that may be looking at this for the first time so because this has an integrated uh, forend the way it's configured the blazer factory let me do this Blazer factory muzzle devices will not fit through this uh, through this forend. So you can see it's these are too big anyway. I'm not a big fan of muzzle brakes. This one came on the 243 rifle, the barrel that you saw me in another video, and I just was curious if it would fit in that. And um, you know it, it does not. But honestly, I just put the suppressor on it anyway. But you know there there are other like we have Surefire brake. I'm sure no problem would fit in that. And now that I'm even thinking about it, the way this is designed, if you so chose, you could probably take, you could take this off. It just bolts in right there under that pick rail. I bet you that could come right off if that was really something that was bothering you. So you could, you know, almost kind of look like a tactical two with your, with your barrel totally hanging out there in the breeze. So also another issue, another, you know, limitation of this design with some of the traditional balls or equipment is going to be the use of barrels with iron sights or open sights. Now, this may not necessarily be an issue with, um, say, like a, a super thin barrel. The only uh, open sight or iron sight barrel that I happen to have is a Safari weight 300 Win Mag barrel with, you know, with Safari style open type sights and it's pretty cool the thing is at least in this configuration this barrel these sights will not go up in through that through that forend so you know something something to consider however there is a workaround for that and I'm doing that here just to kind of show the point if you look at this rifle so this is a barrel with no sights on this is a, uh, a barrel that's cut for a you know for a scope mount and it's a but 223 if I wanted to I could just very easily throw a red dot right up there at the uh, at the front of the gun and I'm telling you I think you could get away with that I think that would be a good substitute for irons if you wanted to use a red dot and you just wanted to go hunting and use a lighter barrel I just thought that hmm, pretty interesting it's already there why not use it so now let's look at some bonus features of the uh, of the stock that um, I think probably are not really um, not really uh, being thought about too much. So um, 
a lot of uh, tactical stocks or tactical guns or you know they can get heavier and heavier and heavier and as you know as you saw in some of the earlier videos I have a fluted heavyweight match 243 barrel with you know that big break on it and that big old scope well I have installed in this gun a semi-weight 223 caliber barrel that is pretty lightweight and it gives the user the option to possibly practice a position shooting or offhand shooting or some flexibility if you want to engage in some different types of training but you don't necessarily want to spend all day trying to hold up you know four pounds of barrel on the end of your gun so it, you know I wouldn't buy this for that feature but if you're in the blazer game you probably have a lot of semi-weight or lightweight or pencil barrels and they would just drop in on this kit and it's just you know nothing changes on the back of the gun but the balance and the weight it's pretty interesting so you've got your primary rifle that you can do a lot more with if weight is a concern thought that was uh thought that was pretty cool also what has become more popular with the prs kids is a 22 caliber rimfire trainer to the point where there are now guys who are um spending big money buying or building clones of their big guns in 22 long rifle well blazer this just year they have announced that they have come out with a 22 rimfire kit we're still waiting for it to come into the u.s there's been a little bit of delay but it's all over Europe I don't think they're in Australia yet, but I've seen them all over Europe and that system just you buy the 22 barrel you get a 22 bolt the blazer uh, the blazer uh, 22 rimfire kit actually uses an insert just in your standard magazine so you know you can turn your big mamma jamma heavyweight tactical rifle into a 22 trainer either for cheap training or position shooting again or maybe you want to go to one of those rimfire matches and see how you do and you really don't have to change guns i thought that was that was pretty neat now there is one thing i would recommend if you get one of these that you may want to consider changing and you may have noticed it right here so let me show you what it is so we can get this on video this let's take it out this pistol grip has a has a uh, let's get it here. This pistol grip has a relief, a recess cut in the front of it, and the reason it has that is so you can clear the backs of these magazines to get them in for the trigger groups in the magazines. So, what I would do, looking at this, if this were my chassis, and that is yet to be determined. What I most likely would do is cut more of a relief in this shelf. There's a shelf right there. I would open that shelf up. My finger may, I may feel it a little bit on my middle finger, but it's not gonna affect my grip at all. But it would also give me just a few more millimeters of clearance for getting the, uh, the trigger group in and out of the, uh, in and out of the gun. And I think that would be something you know definitely to consider it also may be possible to move to move that pistol grip back and forth as well so or just simply change it if you want a different kind of pistol grip because hey it's an air pistol grip so that's where we're at right now with the um the blazer r8 ragnarok chassis system kind of the features that i see or the uh the 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 bonus the you know the bonus upgrades uh, to the system and I think it's definitely worth looking into if you're into the Blazer game. If you want to see the uh, videos of us shooting this gun and uh, run it through its paces, go to our website john1911.com. That's j-o-h-n-1911.com. Remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.